The Maya Riviera, past Maya Riviera, past, table of contents All about the Maya Riviera With visiting and touring information Geography History Attractions And other points of interest Dr. Sydney Soapcloth Dr. Sydney 22 at gmail.com 2023 Narration by Dr. Sydney Soapcloth Zoe Phonemes And Nathan Cole Tove For a complete discussion of YouTube navigation Please go to tiny.one slash yt navigator The My Read Era What is the Maya Riviera? Mexico has two major resort areas. There is the Mexican Riviera on the west coast, and on the east coast, on the Yucatan Peninsula, is the region known as the Maya Riviera. Here is the Yucatan Peninsula in the southern part of Mexico. The Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico has the Estados O states of Yucatan, Campeche, and Quintana Roo. Now the Yucatan is a bustling tourist mecca with the resort areas of Cancun and the Caribbean coast of the northern Yucatan Peninsula known as the Maya Riviera. Fully one-fourth of Mexico's foreign tourist revenue is generated from this area. This area attracts over 3 million visitors each year, especially to the major resort city of Cancun. They come for the white sand beaches and the warm waters of the Caribbean coast. Since the 1970s, the tourist industry has become the mainstay of the region's economy. This started with the development of Cancun and later spread down the coast in the region known as the Maya Riviera. The region from Cancun to Tulum is also known as the Cancun Tulum Corridor. Here is the Maya Riviera extending on the Caribbean coast of the Yucatan from Cancun down to the Maya ruins of Tulum, the Great Maya Civilization. The Maya Civilization. In this region, the ancient Maya civilization reached its greatest heights in the years from 250 to 900 AD. A major attraction of this region is the ruins of the ancient Maya civilization. This is the Maya area. The total area covered by the Maya civilization was about 120,000 square miles, which is about the same size as Great Britain or a bit smaller than California. Who were the Maya? The people who built and later abandoned these majestic pyramids scattered around Central America. Archaeologists have long known that the Maya, who flourished between about 250 and 900 AD, perfected the most complex writing system in the hemisphere, mastered mathematics and astrological calendars of astonishing accuracy, and built massive pyramids all over Central America from Yucatan to modern Honduras. The major Mayan cities and ceremonial centers feature a variety of pyramidal temples or palaces overlaid with limestone blocks and richly ornamented with narrative, ceremonial, and astronomical reliefs and inscriptions that have ensured the stature of Mayan art as premier among Indian cultures. Here is a pyramid of Chichen Itza. Here is another pyramid of Chichen Itza. Deep within the jungles of Mexico and Guatemala and extending into the limestone shelf of the Yucatan Peninsula are the fabled temples and palaces of the Maya. These lands were the home of the Western Hemisphere's greatest ancient civilization. While Europe still slumbered in the midst of the Dark Ages, these innovative people had charted the heavens, evolved the only true writing system native to the Americas, and were masters of mathematics, 
and the calendar. Without the advantage of metal tools, beasts of burden or even the wheel, they were able to construct vast cities with an astonishing degree of architectural perfection and variety. Their legacy in stone survives in a spectacular fashion at places such as Palenque, Tikal, Tulum, Chutsen Itza, Copan and Ushmal. Their legacy lives on as well in the seven million descendants of the classic Maya civilization. Chapter 3 Our story begins in 1839, in New York City. Our story starts in 1839 in New York City, with John Lloyd Stevens. John Lloyd Stevens was a lawyer and explorer. Stevens was bored with the practice of law, and was advised to travel for reasons of health in 1834. He set out on a journey that took him through Eastern Europe and the Middle East, where he was particularly drawn to many of the archaeological sites. Two popular books resulted Incidents of Travel in Egypt, Arabia Petria, and the Holy Land. In two volumes, 1837, and Incidents of Travel in Greece, Turkey, Russia, and Poland. In two volumes, 1838. These books included drawings by the English illustrator and archaeologist Frederick Catherwood. Stevens had heard rumors of the existence of ancient lost cities in the jungles of Central America. In 1839 he set out with Frederick Catherwood, an artist and illustrator, on an epic voyage of exploration and discovery. Stevens and Catherwood left New York City in 1839 and traveled by sailing ship to the coast of Honduras. After reaching the coast of Honduras, Stevens and Catherwood traveled through the jungle to the Maya ruins at Copan. After hacking their way through the thick tropical rainforest, they encountered an amazing sight, the ruins of the ancient Maya city of Copan. It lay before us like a shattered bark in the midst of the ocean. Her masts gone, her crew perished, and none to tell whence she came, or what caused her destruction. All was mystery, dark, impenetrable mystery. Later, Stevens and Catherwood were to discover the ruins of the cities of Uxmal and Palenque in Mexico. The Maya area encompasses the Mexican states or estatus of Yucatan, Quintana Roo, Campeche and Chiapas as well as parts of Guatemala, Belize, and Honduras. The principal cities of the ancient Maya civilization are Copan, Tikal, Palenque, Uxmal, and Chitsen Itza. The report of this expedition. Incidents of travel in Central America. Chiapas. And Yucatan in two volumes, 1841, and the publication of Catherwood's superb drawings produced much popular and scholarly interest in the ancient Maya civilization. This began the extensive research by many archaeologists, and both the scholars into the mostly forgotten accounts of the lands of the Maya by Spanish conquerors and explorers and the ruins of the Maya cities. The Maya Civilization Who were the Maya? The people who built and later abandoned these majestic pyramids scattered around Central America. Archaeologists have long known that the Maya who flourished between 250 to 900 AD, perfected the most complex writing system in the hemisphere, mastered mathematics and astrological calendars of astonishing accuracy, and built massive pyramids all over Central America, from Yucatan to modern Honduras. To quote Arthur de Marest, a Vanderbilt University archaeologist, 
who for the past few years has led a team of researchers unearthing the remains of Dos Pilas. A one-time Maya metropolis in northern Guatemala, you've got lost cities in the jungle. Secret inscriptions that only a few people can read. Tombs with treasures in them. And then the mystery of why it all collapsed. Before the Spanish conquest of Mexico and Central America, the Maya possessed one of the greatest civilizations of the Western Hemisphere. They practiced agriculture, built great stone buildings and pyramid temples, and it worked gold and copper. They also developed a system of hieroglyphic writing and a highly sophisticated calendar and astronomical systems. The Maya hieroglyphic writing has now largely been deciphered. As early as 1500 AD, the Maya had settled in villages and had developed an agriculture based on the cultivation of corn, or maize, beans, and squash. They began to build ceremonial centers, and by about 200 AD, these had developed into cities containing temples, pyramids, palaces, plazas, and even courts for playing ball. Around 400 AD, great buildings arose from the jungles, and the classic era of Mayan civilization began. The classical period ended around 900 AD when cities of the earlier Maya culture collapsed. The great Maya city of Tikal was abandoned in 879 AD. Later the Toltecs and the Fe tribes from central Mexico invaded the Mayas, and the post-classical period was a time of increased warfare and trade. Again, the Kaltu began to decline in the late post-classical period. The Maya civilization was reduced to small city-states by the time the Spaniards arrived in the 16th century. The ancient Maya quarried immense quantities of building stone, which they cut using harder stones, such as volcanic glass. They practiced mainly slash-and-burn agriculture. But they also used advanced techniques of irrigation and terracing. The Maya made paper from the inner bark of wild fig trees and wrote their hieroglyphs on books made from this paper. They also developed an elaborate and beautiful tradition of sculpture and relief carving, architectural works, and stone inscriptions, and reliefs are the chief sources of knowledge about the Maya. Early Mayan culture showed the influence of an earlier Olmec civilization. The rise of the Maya began about 250 AD. What is known to archaeologists as the classic period of Mayan culture lasted until about 980. At its height Mayan civilization consisted of more than 40 cities, each with a population of from 5,000 to 50,000. Among the principal cities were Chitsen Itza, Tulum, Tikal, Palenque, Bonampak, and Copan. The peak Mayan population may have reached 2 million people, most of whom were settled in the lowlands of what is now Guatemala. After 900 AD the classical Mayan civilization declined precipitously leaving the great cities and ceremonial centers vacant and overgrown with jungle vegetation. The causes of this decline are uncertain. Some scholars have suggested that armed conflicts and the exhaustion of agricultural land were responsible. During the post-classic period in the years from about 900 to 1519, cities such as Chitsen Itza, Ushmal, and may open in the highlands of the Yucatan Peninsula continued to flourish for several centuries after the great lowland cities had become depopulated. By the time the Spaniards conquered the area in the early 16th century, most of the Mayawima village-dwelling agriculturists, 
who practiced the ancient religious rites of their ancestors. The major Mayan cities and ceremonial centers feature a variety of pyramidal temples or palaces overlaid with limestone blocks and richly ornamented with narrative, ceremonial, and astronomical reliefs and inscriptions that have ensured the stature of Mayan art as premier among Indian cultures. But the true nature of Mayan society, the meaning of its hieroglyphics, and the chronicle of its history remained unknown to scholars for centuries after the Spaniards discovered the ancient Mayan building sites. Based on these discoveries, scholars in the mid-20th century mistakenly thought that Mayan society was composed of a priestly class of peaceful stargazers and calendar keepers, supported by a devout peasantry. The Maya were thought to be utterly absorbed in their religious and cultural pursuits, in favorable contrast to the more warlike Indian empires of central Mexico. The progressive decipherment of nearly all of the Mayan hieroglyphic writing has provided a truer, if less elevating picture of Mayan society and culture. Many of the hieroglyphs depict the histories of the Mayan dynastic rulers, who waged war on rival Mayan cities, and took their aristocrats captive. These captives were then tortured, mutilated, and sacrificed to the Mayan gods. Indeed, torture and human sacrifice were fundamental religious rituals of Mayan society. They were thought to guarantee fertility, demonstrate piety, and propitiate the gods. And if such practices were neglected, cosmic disorder and chaos were thought to result. The drawing of human blood was thought to nourish the gods, and was thus necessary to achieve contact with them. The Mayan rulers, as the intermediaries between the Mayan people and the gods, had to undergo ritual bloodletting and self-torture. A second expedition by Stevens and Cather would resulted in the publication of a second book, Incidents of Travel in Yucatan, in two volumes, and published in 1843. This was an account of the visit to the ruins of 44 ancient Maya sites. These were the days just before photography was widely used. Frederick Cather would use an instrument called a camera lucida to aid in making his drawings very accurate. Camera lucida is Latin for light chamber. The camera lucida was an optical device that projected an image of the object to be copied on a half-silvered mirror, so that it was superimposed on the papel on which the drawing was made. The drawing was then traced over the superimposed image. As a result, very precise representations of objects could be made. This is Frederick Catherwood measuring an ancient Maya ruin at Tulum. Frederick Catherwood's book, Views of Ancient Monuments of Central America, Chiapas and Yucatan was published in 1844. This is a drawing by Frederick Catherwood. This is an oath a drawing by Frederick Catherwood. This is an oath a drawing by Frederick Catherwood. This is another drawing by Frederick Catherwood. This is the Palenque Valley as seen 160 years ago by Frederick Catherwood. This is the Temple of the Inscriptions in Palenque as depicted by Catherwood. This is an oath a drawing by Frederick Catherwood. These are engravings of Stila, front and back, by Frederick Catherwood, done in 1839. Stila are stone pillars, or columns, with carvings that depict historical events. The most prominent type of Maya ruin is the pyramid. The Maya pyramids were used for religious rituals.
The Maya Pyramid is a step structure similar in form to the ziggurats of ancient Mesopotamia. The Maya Pyramid had a flat top where religious rituals took place, and a stairway up to the top. The Maya Pyramids such as Atushmal and Tikal were large structures, although they were much smaller than the pyramids of Egypt. Here is the Pyramid of Khan. Here is a pyramid of Chichen Itza. This is a pyramid of Chichen Itza. Here is another pyramid at Chichen Itza. The Mayas used a form of arch known as the corbelled arch. A corbelled arch is formed by laying down layers of stones on top of each other such that they project inward until they finally join together. The corbelled arch is to be compared to the rounded or Romanesque arch. Here is another comparison of the corbelled arch with the rounded or Romanesque arch. Here is Mexico and the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. Here are the principal cities and tourist areas in Mexico. The principal tourist areas in the Yucatan Peninsula are Cancun and Cozumel Island. This is a map of the Gulf of Mexico region. We see that the Yucatan Peninsula is due south of New Orleans. This is Middle America, the Maya area. The total area covered by the Maya civilization was about 120,000 square miles, which is about the same size as Great Britain, or a bit smaller than California. The Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico has the Estados, or states of Yucatan, Campeche, and Quintana Roo. The Maya area encompasses the Mexican states so Estados of Yucatan. Quintana Roo, Campeche, and Chiapas, as well as parts of Guatemala, Belize, and Honduras. The principal cities of the ancient Maya civilization are Copan, Tikal, Palenque, Uxmal, and Chichen Itza. Here is the present-day Yucatan Peninsula. The Caribbean coast of the northern Yucatan Peninsula is a very popular resort known as the Maya Riviera. The Maya Riviera is in the Estrado of Quintana Roo. This Caribbean coast region of the Yucatan Peninsula is known as the Maya Riviera because of its climate and many beach resorts. The capital and principal city of the Estado of Yucatan is Merida. There are many Maya ruins in the Estado of Yucatan. Important Maya ruins in Yucatan are at Chichen Itza, Uxmal, Caba, and Labna. The Estado of Campeche is in the southwestern corner of the Yucatan Peninsula, facing the Gulf of Mexico. Chapter 8 Mesoamerica The Native American peoples migrated many thousands of years ago from Asia, over the land bridge across the Bering Sea. The Aztec, Maya, and Inca civilizations were established in these regions of Mesoamerica and South America. This is Mesoamerica or Middle America. The Maya are probably the best known of the classical civilizations of Mesoamerica. Originating in the Yucatan around 2600 BC, they rose to prominence around 250 AD in present-day southern Mexico, Guatemala, northern Belize and western Honduras. The topography of the area varies greatly from volcanic mountains, which comprise the highlands in the south to a porous limestone shelf, known as the lowlands of the Yucatan Peninsula. In the time of the Mayas, the southern portion of the lowlands was covered by a rainforest, with an average height of about 150 feet. 
The northern lowlands were also comprised of forests, but they were drier than their southern counterparts, mainly growing small thorny trees. Prehistoric Mexico saw several Indian nations rise to eminence. Among them were the Toltecs, Zapotecs, and finally the ruthless and cruel Aztecs. The Mayas of Middle America created two great centers. Their first cities were established in what is present-day Guatemala and Honduras. This was in the era called the Classic Period by archaeologists. The Classic Period lasted from about 320 to 900 AD. The great cities of the post-classic period from about 975 to the time of the Spanish conquest we built on the Yucatan Peninsula. The handsome architecture shows the influence of the Toltecs from Mexico, who overrun and ruled them. Weakened by civil war. The Mayas we conquered by the Spanish in the years 1527 to 1546. The Maya cities had stone temples and huge monuments, or steles, carved with images of gods and sacred animals, and bearing the date in their numbering system. Their astronomer priests devised a calendar, and wrote religious and scientific books in hieroglyphic writing. The Indians built their mammoth structures without strong draft animals or sharp metal tools. They had no wheels to help them in carrying and lifting. And only the Mayas had developed writing to pass on their knowledge. The Maya built on the inherited inventions and ideas of earlier civilizations, such as the Olmec, and developed astronomy complex calendar systems, and hieroglyphic writing. The Maya were noted as well for elaborate and highly decorated ceremonial architecture, including temple pyramids, palaces and observatories, all built without metal tools. The Maya were also skilled farmers and cleared large sections of the tropical rainforest, where groundwater was scarce. They use large underground reservoirs for the storage of rainwater. Here are the Maya and Aztec regions. These are the Inca regions in what is present-day Peru. The locations of principal Maya ruins in the Yucatan Peninsula are shown here by the red dots. Chichen Itza is a site that draws many visitors. It is the Yucatan's best-known Maya ruins. Chichen Itza is located about 140 miles east of Cancun. Chichen Itza is one of the most visited of the Maya ruins due to its proximity to Cancun. Chichen Itza is in the Estado of Yucatan. This is an oath a map showing the principal Maya ruins at Chichen Itza. This is a map showing the principal Maya ruins at Chichen Itza. This is another map showing the principal Maya ruins at Chichen Itza. A cenote is a sinkhole in the porous limestone shelf that covers most of the northern part of the Yucatan Peninsula. There are many cenotes in the northern part of the Yucatan Peninsula. Here is another cenote. There is an oath a cenote. The word chichen kub means small holes and probably alludes to its roof comb. The building must have had both a religious and public use, since there is a ball cord joined to it. The house of the deer is named for a picture with figures of these animals found inside. The deer pictures and sculptures were stolen, but the name of this temple remains. This circular building, El Caracol, the Spanish word for snail, is a monument that illustrates the Maya's deep interest in both astronomy and architecture. El Caracol, the observatory, 
was dedicated to the study of the movement of the stars and planets, and is one of the most beautiful accomplishments of the Maya and Yucatan. Inside the tower, several small windows were used to study the movements of the stars as well as an unusual stairway resembling a snail shell, which leads to the highest part of the tower for closer observations. The Mayas' deep interest in astronomy and calendars helped the Mayas to establish the cycle for sowing crops and of the activities, which were important to the economic and social life of the city. The ossuary like the Pyramid of Kulkulkan, has four sets of steps with large serpents' heads resting on the ground. And atop the pyramid is a high temple. The ossuary has a shaft cut into the center of the pyramid. Archaeologists say this shaft represents the entrance to the world of the dead, where both the Maya paradise, as well as its inferno, were represented. Adjoining the Temple of the Warriors on the eastern plaza of the central plain of Chitsen Yitza, the group of the Thousand Columns was built between 900 and 1280. The group of the Thousand Columns is made up of a series of columns in the form of an irregular square. On the south side it is completed by a building called the Market, but it is obvious that it formed a part of the columns according to the Maya idea of architecture. It is believed the Maya would heat stones in a fire, before dropping them into water, to produce steam, that would vent within this structure. The Maya believed that the process, of taking a steam bath, was spiritually cleansing. The Templo de los Guerreros, or the Temple of the Warriors, was named after discovering the sculpture of warriors on the pillars of the front and supporting columns. These images refer to the military elite to whom the platform of the eagles and jaguars was dedicated. The figures of eagles and jaguars devouring hearts are said to represent the warriors who were responsible for obtaining victims for sacrifice to the gods. The Tsumpantli, O platform of skulls, is a T-shaped stone struck to 60 meters long and 12 meters wide. It was dedicated to the glory of military conquest and ritual sacrifice. The skulls of enemy warriors defeated in battle, as well as other sacrificial victims, were displayed. The decoration served as a reminder of the aggression of the military chiefs and as a terrifying warning to anyone who might attack the city. The Temple of the Bearded Men derives its name from a relief of a bearded lord, an unusual representation in Maya art, who takes his power from the divine god, Kul Kul Khan. It is believed that the ball game was invented in central Mexico, and from there it spread to other villages in Mesoamerica. The ball court of Chitsen Itza is the largest and one of the most beautiful of its kind. The Wago de Pelota, O Ball Court, at Chitsen Itza is surrounded by sloping walls, vertical on the inside but tilted from top to bottom on the outside. The panels along the side walls are decorated with scenes from the ball game and its players. One of the scenes, the beheading of a player in center field witnessed by the players of both teams, is one of the most dramatic examples of Maya art. Possibly the best known construction of Chitsen Itza is El Castillo, also known as the Temple of Kul Kul Khan. It is a square based Step Pyramid, 79 feet, or 24 meters tall. This pyramid was built for astronomical purposes. During the vernal equinox, March 20th, and the autumnal equinox, September 21st, at about 3 p.m., the sunlight bathed the western balustrade of the pyramid's main stairway. 
This causes seven triangles to form imitating the body of a serpent that creeps downwards until it joins the huge serpent's head carved in stone. At the bottom of the stairway, one of the most visited Maya sites is that of Tulum. Tulum was established late in the Maya period. While it is not as magnificent as Chichen Itza or Ushmal, it attracts many visitors because it is one of the closest sites to Cancun and Cozumel. Tulum is about 80 miles, or 130 kilometer, southwest of Cancun. Tulum is easily accessible from both Cancun and Cozumel. Tulum offers spectacular views. Because of its location on a cliff overlooking the Caribbean Sea, the most imposing structure in Tulum is the Castillo, or castle, perched on a cliff above the Caribbean Sea. El Castillo is actually a temple, as well as a fortress. This is a map showing the Maya ruins at Tulum. Note that El Castillo is right at the edge of the Caribbean Sea, Ushmal. Ushmal is another major Maya ruin site. This is a map of Ushmal. Ushmal's most distinct structure is the Pyramid of the Magician. It stands upon a unique oval base and rises to 40 meters in height. This pyramid was built in several stages, as the series of tiers shows and was extended and restructured between the 8th and 11th centuries. This pyramid is also called the Pyramid of the Dwarf, from a story about a magical dwarf hatched from an egg by an old woman. The ruler of Ushmal challenged him to build a pyramid in one day, which he did, and subsequently became the ruler himself. Like most such myths, this probably told of a real contest for power. The nunnery quadrangle is located on the west side of the Pyramid of the Dwarf, and is the most visible structure in the city due to its size. This was called the nunnery quadrangle because its shape and many corners and holes in the structure reminded the explorers of a nunnery. The cemetery group is to the west of the Great Plaza. The group has one restored temple, and a collection of carved stele with well-preserved death's head symbols, and other glyphs that show central Mexican influence. The governor's palace at Ushmal is a long low building atop a huge platform. It has the longest facade in PH Colombian Mesoamerica. The impressive development of mathematics and astronomy is closely related to the Mayan religion, and indeed is a part of it. In Mayan mathematics, positional notation, and the use of the zero represented a pinnacle of intellectual achievement. Instead of the ten digits of U decimal system, the Maya used a base number of 20. This is a base 20. Ovigesimal system. They also used a system of dots and bars as shorthand for counting. A dot stood for one and a bar stood for five. Here are some examples of the numbers one through four. The number five was indicated by a bar symbol. For the numbers six through nine, dots were added above the bar. For the number ten, Two bars signifying 5 plus 5 were used. For the numbers 11 through 14, dots were added above the bar. The number 15 used three bars for 5 plus 5 plus 5. For the numbers 16 through 19, dots we added above the bars. This completes the numbers 1 through 19. For numbers greater than 19, a place value system was used, similar to the decimal system in the Maya system. However, the numbers were written from bottom to top rather than from right to left as in the decimal system. The bottom level would be the ones. 
The next level up is the 20s. For example, the number 21 would be written like this. The number 22 would be written like this. The number 42 would be written like this. Since the position of the numbers is important, there needs to be a way of indicating the position of the number that is zero other than just using a blank space. The my is represented as zero by a shell symbol. So, this represents the number 20. This represents the number 40. This represents the number 400. This represents the number 8000. This represents the number 8864. This represents the number 168421. Here is an example of addition. We see that very large numbers could be handled this way. This capacity for large numbers was probably necessitated by the interest of the Mayans in astronomy and their complex calendar cycles. The Maya constitute a majority of about 55 to 60 percent of the population in Guatemala. There is a high degree of illiteracy among the Maya. The Guatemalan banknotes of today have the amount written in the old Maya numbering system. Here is a 20 kets to less Guatemalan banknote. This is a 50 kets to less Guatemalan banknote. This is a 100 kets to lay Guatemalan banknote. The Spanish Conquest. The Spanish under Hernan Cortes conquered Mexico and the Yucatan Peninsula starting in the 1520s. Most of all knowledge of ancient Maya life comes from the writings of a Franciscan monk, Diego de Landa who arrived in the Yucatan in 1549. Chapter 14 When Diego de Landa and other Spanish priests arrived in the 16th century, they found hundreds of folding books called codices and promptly burned them as they were considered pagan works filled with the words of the devil. Today, only parts of four codices remain. The books are almanacs filled with astrological information. The people who wrote the books were scribes, well versed in astronomy. Using sophistical mathematics, they calculated the movements of the night sky thousands of years into the past and thousands of years into the future. They knew that the universe moved in cycles, some very large and some very small. They even predicted eclipses of the sun. They seem to have been fascinated by the relationship between time and the events in their own lives. Diego de Landa observed the Maya and their use of glyphs and tried to translate them into Spanish. In his attempts to convert the Maya to Christianity, de Landa destroyed their religious possessions, burning many of the codices. Astronomy was very important to the Mayas. Maya priests observed the positions of the sun, moon, and stars. They made tables predicting eclipses and the orbit of the planet Venus. The Maya Indians of southern Mexico and Central America used mathematics and astronomical observations to formulate two kinds of calendars. A sacred almanac of 260 days. And a solar calendar of 365 days. Mayan astronomy underlaid a complex calendar system involving an accurately determined solar year of 18 months of 20 days. Plus an unlucky 5-day period. A sacred year of 260 days. With 13 cycles of 20 named days and a variety of longer cycles culminating in the long count. Based on a zero date in 3114 BC, 
Mayan astronomers compiled precise tables of positions for the Moon and Venus, and it were able to predict solar eclipses. The priests also used mathematics and astronomy to develop two kinds of calendars. One was a sacred almanac of 260 days. Each day was named with one of 20 day names, and a number from 1 to 13. Each of the 20 day names had a god or goddess associated with it. The priests predicted good or bad luck by studying the combinations of gods or goddesses and numbers. The Maya also had a calendar of 365 days, based on the orbit of the Earth around the Sun. These days we divided into 18 months of 20 days each, plus 5 days at the end of the year. The Mayas had hundreds of gods. Sacrifice played an important part in the Mayan religion, especially in later times. Then blood was essential to the gods, particularly the rain gods. Priests and commoners pierced their tongues and ears, smearing their blood on the idols. It was thought that blood sacrifices would bring rain. Human sacrifices became increasingly common during the later years of the Mayan Empire. Human sacrifices took place when disasters struck, when there was no rain, when crops failed, or during plagues foreign invasions, or other disasters. Generally, human sacrifices were done either by cutting out the heart of the victim, by throwing short spears at a painted area on the victim's chest, or by throwing the victim into a cenote, or sacred well. Systematic explorations of the Mayan sites we first undertaken in the 1830s and a small portion of the writing system was deciphered in the early and mid-20th century. These discoveries shed some light on Mayan religion, which was based on a pantheon of Natu gods, including those of the sun, the moon, rain, and corn. A priestly class was responsible for an elaborate cycle of rituals and ceremonies. The Maya were undoubtedly among the great ancient civilizations of Mesoamerica. At their peak around 800 AD, the Maya ranged from Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula to Honduras. Then, very rapidly, this society of some 15 million people imploded leaving deserted cities, trade routes, and immense pyramids in ruins. The sudden demise of this once great civilization is one of the greatest archaeological mysteries of our time. What caused the collapse of the great Maya civilization? The answer, say researchers, is climate change. According to a recent study, a long period of dry climate, punctuated by three intense droughts, led to the end of the Maya society. Climate change is to blame for one of the most catastrophic collapses in human history, said one of the study's authors. The Maya were particularly susceptible to long droughts because about 95% of their population centers depended solely on lakes, ponds, and rivers, containing on average an 18-month supply of water for drinking and agriculture. The Maya collapse can serve as a valuable lesson today to societies that are vulnerable to droughts. When droughts strike, they can trigger a chain reaction beginning with crop failures, leading to malnutrition, increased disease and competition for resources and ultimately causing warfare between nations and socio-political upheaval. We can handle climate change if we're prepared for it. The Maya were not prepared. Recommended videos, The Maya Riviera. Part 1. The Past. Recommended video, 
Stevens and Catherwood and Copan. 14 minutes. 45 seconds. Recommended video. Breaking the Maya Code, The Dawn of Decipherment, 3 minutes, 51 seconds. Recommended video, Breaking the Maya Code, The Maya World, 2 minutes, 13 seconds. Recommended video, Recommended video, Breaking the Maya Code number 1, Introduction, 3 minutes, 33 seconds. Recommended video. Recommended video, Breaking the Maya Code number 3, The Maya Books, 3 minutes, 9 seconds. Recommended video, Breaking the Maya Code number 4, The Maya Calendar, 2 minutes, 18 seconds. Recommended video, Breaking the Maya Code number 5, Yuri Norasov, 4 minutes, 8 seconds. Recommended video. Breaking the Maya Code Number 6, The Collaborators. 4 minutes. Recommended video, Breaking the Maya Code Number 7, David Stewart. 3 minutes. 50 seconds. Recommended video, Breaking the Maya Code Number 8, Coming Home. 2 minutes. 16 seconds. Recommended video, National Geographic Documentary, The Maya, The Lost Civilization. 52 minutes 48 seconds recommended video the maya civilization today one minute 40 seconds recommended video riviera maya vacation travel guide expedia three minutes 37 seconds maya riviera past table of contents thanks for watching Please watch some more of my great videos.